So today I'm going to be putting Mentos in a closed bottle of soda and seeing if the pressure increases. And to give it the best chance of explosion, I'm also gonna shake it in a paint shaker. So I've done a video before where I put soda in a paint shaker, and then I also showed if you shake the soda up, it doesn't actually increase the pressure in the bottle, it just makes more bubbles and that's what makes it fizz out. And so it should be that when you put Mentos in a closed bottle, it doesn't actually increase the pressure. But I've seen videos online where they put Mentos in a closed bottle and it explodes the bottle. And I'm not sure if those are fake or not. So I'm gonna do my own test today and see if that's real or not. And I'm gonna make it most likely to explode by putting it in a paint shaker. So the question is how do you get a Mentos into a closed bottle of soda without it overflowing before you close the lid? So my idea here is I have a little magnet and it's glued to the Mentos, so I'm gonna keep it away from the soda, close the lid, and then pull the magnet away and let it drop in the soda once the lid is closed. So first I need to dump out some of the soda. Okay, here we go, let's do it. Okay, let's see if I can do this. See my magnet holding my Mentos there? Okay, let's drop it in. Three, two, one. Okay, here we go. Okay, so Feels pretty tight, but it's been a while and nothing's happening. Doesn't feel like it's exploding tight. So it feels like it's about the same pressure as this new soda bottle here that I haven't opened. So I know this seems disappointing. Putting a Mentos in a closed soda bottle <laughs> didn't do anything. It just repressurized it to the original pressure. So let's check out if it really is at the same pressure. I'm gonna put a lid on where I can measure the pressure. Okay, so I have here a Diet Coke I've put my pressure measuring device on top and I've let it sit for a few hours to come to equilibrium again because I had to open it and put the lid back on. So first, let me measure the pressure before I drop the Mentos in. I wanna try to do it without letting the air pressure out. Okay, so I got 115 kilopascals. Based on these other internet videos where they put Mentos in and the bottle explodes, you'd expect a crazy increase in pressure. Okay, Mentos in a soda bottle. Three, two, one. Okay, so nothing really even happened. <laughs> 110 kilopascals. <laughs> So will dropping a Mentos in a closed soda bottle cause an increase in pressure? The answer is no. So you can see my Mentos in there, not even making that fizz. But what's cool, once I open it, then it will have all the nucleation points and it will fizz out and explode. So let's try that. Okay, so what would be a better prank than shaking up your friend's soda and then giving it back to him? Would be putting a Mentos in the soda bottle, closing it up, letting it repressurize again to equilibrium pressure, and then letting them open it. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> so the bottle wasn't shaken at all before, but it has the Mentos in there, so it increases the nucleation points, so it can bubble up and create a lot of bubbles, and the bubbles is what makes it overflow. So to understand what's happening here, here's a few things you need to understand. First, you need to understand that gases can dissolve into liquid. For example, I have some water here, and you just see water, but really there's water and gases dissolved in here. And it doesn't mean the gases are liquid, it just means that there's gas molecules in between the water molecules here. And we know that's true because fish breathe underwater and they're breathing oxygen. And so they have gills that are able to suck up the oxygen that's in the liquid here. But there's not actually a lot of oxygen in the water because oxygen isn't very soluble in the liquid. And that just means that oxygen doesn't really want to be in between water molecules and so not a lot of it can go in there. But there's a different gas 
that is very soluble in water, and that's carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is about 200 times more soluble in liquid. So that means that for a given volume of water, you can have about 200 times more carbon dioxide in between the water molecules than you can oxygen. And the higher pressure that your gas is, the more CO2 you can have in the liquid. So that's why they pressurize soda bottles is because they want to put as much CO2 in the liquid as possible. But when you open the soda, you reduce that pressure. So now the liquid that did have the CO2, it says, oh wait, we're not at a high pressure anymore. So it starts pushing that CO2 back out of the liquid. And so it dissolves out of the liquid back into the gas phase. So that's the reason why when you open a soda bottle, you hear the pressure release. And then when you close it back up, the bottle will actually repressurize. And that's because the CO2 that was dissolved in the liquid keeps releasing that CO2 from the liquid until it gets back to this about the same pressure that it was before you open the bottle. So I have here just some carbonated water. So when I open the can, I release the pressure. So now there's more CO2 in the liquid than there should be at this pressure. And so the CO2 wants to come out. And you can get it to come out faster by shaking it up, pouring it out of the can, so you can see these bubbles that are forming in here are just CO2 that was dissolved in the water that's trying to get out of it. Putting in a Mentos or something, it just gives it a surface to form CO2 bubbles to come off of. So you can see that it's just helping release the CO2 out of the liquid faster. So the only thing that the Mentos does is change how fast something is happening. It's not changing the pressure of anything. So when you put Mentos in an open bottle of soda, you drop it in there, and normally the CO2 would just continue to bubble out of the liquid, and you wouldn't really notice because it's a gas. But when you drop in a Mentos, it forms little tiny bubbles, and all of those little tiny bubbles expand, and that expansion pushes all the liquid out and it makes it foam. And usually people associate that foaming with an increase in pressure, even though it has nothing to do with an increase in pressure. So by putting this Mentos in here, essentially what I'm doing is I'm just making this soda go flat quicker, meaning I'm getting rid of the carbonation in there. I'm getting rid of all of that CO2 that was dissolved in there and it's coming out of the liquid. So if I were to put a lid on this, it would start to pressurize this glass jar but it wouldn't ever get to a greater pressure than the pressure that was in this can here. That's because it already lost a lot of the CO2 that it originally had, and there's no new generation of CO2, so it can't get to a greater pressure. And the difference between putting a Mentos in there and not putting it in there would just be how fast it can repressurize the container. So just remember that with soda, the pressure comes from the liquid itself. And when you shake the liquid, it doesn't increase the pressure at all because it still has the same amount of CO2 in it as before. All shaking does is increase the little tiny bubbles in there so that when you open it, the gas bubbles expand and it pushes all the liquid out. And another thing people say is they say, okay, then why when I shake a can, sometimes they've been shaking a can or their friend has been shaking a can and the can breaks open. And they usually assume that that's due to the high pressure of shaking. But really it's just due to the mechanical shock of shaking the can. When you shake the can, the can is already a pretty great pressure. And when you shake it, you're putting a lot of force on the ends of the can. It's only a little tiny sheet of aluminum that's holding all that pressure in. So the only thing that's gonna increase your pressure in your bottle or your can is heating it up. I've seen online different videos of people putting Mentos in soda bottles, so they open it up, they have some way to keep it above the liquid, close it, and then they let it sit there and the soda bottle explodes. And I'm not sure, I'm not saying that they were faked, I'm just saying that I just showed right here that you put Mentos in a soda bottle and it doesn't explode, it doesn't even increase in pressure. To explode this can, it would take a huge amount of increase in volume to explode it. The only way to really do that is to put some CO2 there or liquid nitrogen in there and that would cause it to generate enough gas to explode. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any further questions about this pressure increasing in a soda bottle, let me know in the comments section. I get a lot of, I get a lot of pushback from them. So let me know if you have any further questions and I'll try to answer them in the comments section. 
And if you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button to be notified when my latest video comes out, and I'll see you next time.